welcome to worship and a very special welcome is to those who may be visiting us by whatever way you're watching or listening to our service today. We're so glad to have those that are in person today and thank you for following our new uh, guidelines that are in place. You still have a few days left, at least till the end of the month, to help fill the bus for the local children in the atrium. We have that school bus for all school supplies, so if you can help out, we greatly appreciate it. You can bring your school supplies and fill up the bus. There's been a great response so far, but I think we could do a little bit better. So if you have time, you can do that. We would greatly appreciate you doing that. Because of the rise of COVID cases in the Fredericksburg area, Holy Communion will not be celebrated today and has been suspended until future notice. We want to keep people safe, and through talking with the leadership of the church, this is for the best interest of all people. Today is Rally Day for Zion Lutheran Church. Seems sort of odd, doesn't it, with everything that's going on? But we can still celebrate the end of summer. Are we glad the heat's going away? Well, come on, you can at least say, what are you talking about, Pastor? The heat's just now here. But we can celebrate the fact that summer is over and that the fall is supposed to be coming very shortly with that. So this is the day we set down, set aside each year, to start up our church programs after the summertime. With the rise of COVID cases, this may not look the same. This may not feel the same. It is not the same as it has been in the past. Sunday school is out of caution, has decided to delay its opening and its starting, just for one example. Other groups and organizations and committees are doing the same thing. Now, it's your safety for people, they've decided not to continue on until things get better. And I've been advising people that have talked to me, and quite a few people have talked to me, to do it by a month-to-month -month basis, because we just don't know how this will take and how this will go. So for this month and for the next month, this is what we're planning on doing. That our groups and organizations are still looking behind the scenes and ways that they can be safe and going, getting back to operating again and doing the Lord's ministry. So we ask for your patience and for your suggestions. And if you have any, please talk to a council member. They'd love to hear from you. And then I also ask that you keep this church in prayer. Do you pray for your church? Now's the time to pray for your church. We need to hear from you. We need to have you pray for us, that the Holy Spirit will guide us and lead us in whatever decisions are having to be made. And we would appreciate that very much. And sadly, the last announcement is about Gary McVeigh. Gary McVeigh went to be with his Lord this last week, this last Friday, and at, uh, at, at, at there will be a service for him this next Wednesday at Brian's funeral home in Kerrville. So we ask that you to remember this family in your prayers. We ask that you remember them and everything that's going on in their lives. And please continue to pray for our church. With this in mind, we ask that you put all of this stuff around that's sort of been buzzing around and getting us thinking about different things in different ways. We ask that you put it out of your mind as we hear our free worship music.
Would you please stand as you are able for the confession and forgiveness? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please take a moment to privately confess your sins. Salvation in 
and he makes me cry, sets my sinful soul on fire. When God lifts his love in my heart, sometimes though the way is dreary, dark, and cold, and some unburdened sorrow keeps me from my goal, I go. Thank you. 
Word of God inspired by the Spirit. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the gospel affirmation. But it's up to us whether going 
going to let it get us down, and we're going to keep on rolling, and we're going to keep on going. Safety first, of course, but we'll do the best that we can. Because today in this service, we want to emphasize Christian education. Christian education. Now, to keep you awake, no, to keep you involved in the sermon, I want you to take your bulletin out in front of it. I want you to have a pencil in your hand, and I want you to answer the following question. Where do you see Christian education taking place at Zion? Where do you see Christian education taking place at Zion? Pretty good, huh? Pretty good. Think about it. Think about where do you see Christian education at our church? I don't think there are many people writing. I'm doing a lot of thinking. But I don't know if they're doing a lot of writing. There's a lot of Christian ed that you don't know is taking place. That's why we emphasize Christian ed. <laughs> what are you doing back there, Peter? <laughs> that was not planned. <laughs> Christian ed, how can it take place? Maybe it's in the men's group where education of our Lord is taking place through a Bible study. How about Sunday school? Of course, everybody put down Sunday school. Confirmation, women's group, experiencing God, Bible study, groups and organizations through music on Sunday morning and other ways, through worship, through sermons. I've lost you. <laughs> Come on, get with the program. Through sermons and much, much more. I hope I hit a lot of what's on your list already. I hope you understand that Christian education is more than just the little kids going to Sunday school. Christian education is designed for you to learn more no matter how young or how old you might be. It is there for you to learn more. It is your responsibility to continually feed your home through home devotions, continue to feed yourself through Bible study, to continue to feed yourself by interaction with other people. Most people will agree that education is important. But Christian education, I think, is even more important. The church tries to do a good job. But the church can only do that good in Christian ed by the support and the participation of the body of Christ that is with it. So, most congregations like ours do offer a Sunday school. But we offer more, as I gave you the examples a little bit ago, we offer more when it comes to Christian education. And all of you can do, if you would like to at some point in time. There's a story I'd like to share. It's about two lawyers, Joe and Sam. They were great, great friends. And much to the amazement of one, the other became a Sunday school teacher. And Joe protested, I bet you don't even know the Lord's Prayer, Sam. And he said, Sam said, so wait a minute, everybody knows that. It goes with, now I lay me down to sleep. Well, that was a joke, and nobody laughed. Or is it a joke? Is it how we receive it? And the other and Joe just says, okay, you win. You obviously know the Bible better than I do. There's a lot of people who don't know very much when it comes to Christian education, and coming to knowing about what's in this book called the Bible and what is done in this world. When it comes to educating others about Jesus. Study after study shows how important Christian education is, especially Sunday school in the mainline churches. And Christian education is the most powerful way to educate people. And the single influence that, that people, that churches can have to educate other people to get closer to the Lord and to be with the Lord. Our, you know, one of all the areas of congregational life involved in the effective Christian education program, the strongest tie to a person's, person's growth and loyalty goes to the church's Christian education part, from adults and from adults to adolescents. Parents' education this year, that's a theme, you probably have seen it and heard it, and I agree with it, it's ASAP. Now, I'm used to ASAP meaning something else, but in this situation, it means always say a prayer. I like that theme, and I think we're going to adopt it as our church theme and follow parents ed for what they started with this. Always say a prayer for the, our young people in school this year. Always say a prayer for those who are ill. Always say a prayer for those suffering from the effects of COVID. Always say a prayer for those who are providing
providing you the leadership to have the opportunity to be here. Always say a prayer that we can get back to the normal Christian education that we're used to. I want to stress to you how important it is for you to pray by, by bringing up some important points about prayer. The first part is prayer is a powerful force. That force is available to you and to me. Ages ago, Isaiah affirmed this in the fact where he said, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And centuries later, we still know that prayer is what links us to God. Prayer is that communication between you and the Lord, which is so critical to be talking to Him. There are many reasons why people pray, and I know you have your own reasons why you pray. Sometimes we treat prayer almost as if it were magical. We try to manipulate God to do what we want to do when we're in trouble, and when we're alone, we want to say, okay, God, we want this, blah, 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 done. A mother, an example of this, and the mother, maybe you've heard this, sent her fifth grade uh, boy up to bed, and in a few minutes, she went to check on him to make sure that he actually did go to bed. And when she stuck her head into the room, she saw that he was kneeling down by the bed in prayer and pausing to listen to the prayer. She heard her son praying over and over again, let it be Tokyo, please, dear God, let it be Tokyo. And when he finished his prayer, the mother asked him, why did you say to let it be Tokyo? And the boy said with some embarrassment, we had a geography t exam today, and I was in praying that God would make Tokyo the capital of France. <laughs> Prayer is not a magical means by which God does what we want him to do. Prayer is an inner openness to God which allows his divine power to be released in us. Ultimately, the power of prayer is not what we succeed in changing God, but what God succeeds in changing you and me. Prayer is a powerful source. Tap into it when you can. The power of pray is prayer is not changing God, but changing us from unhappy people to happy people. Changing us from people to do good, to, from bad people to good people. Changing cruel people to kind people. If we make a place for prayer in our lives, we will be amazed at what power and strength which is released within our lives. Secondly, prayer brings comfort. You've had that happen. When you pray and you feel better after you pray, that's that comfort that God through the Holy Spirit gives us. I really like the story of a minister who went camping up in the mountains. He was enjoying the hiking through the mountain trail until he found himself face to face with the biggest, the ugliest, the meanest grizzly bear he had ever seen. He saw no way to escape, and the bear was coming toward him growling. And the ministry did only one thing that he knew how to do. He fell to his knees, closed his eyes, and he began to pray. The longer he prayed, the better he felt. The bear had not attacked. So the minister opened his eyes to see that the bear was where the bear was, and the bear was kneeling right in front of him. And the minister was so overjoyed and said, Oh, brother bear, this is so wonderful. It's a comfort to my soul to know that we are praying to the same Lord. The bear at that time opened his eyes, looked at the preacher, and said, Brother, your comfort is going to be short-lived because I'm saying grace. <laughs> there are many reasons to pray, but one of the most valid reasons to find comfort and peace. I think when I talk to people about prayer and what prayer means and how to pray, one of the things people are looking for more than anything else is comfort and peace. And the second thing they want to do is to pray for someone else who is in need of healing or help. That's how much we realize that prayer is so important. George Buttrick said, prayer is a, an, as elemental as a cry in the dark. Think about a cry in the dark. When we cry out in the dark, we are searching for some comfort. We are searching for some peace. 
We are searching for some hope. In the midst of the problems of life, we're searching for a lot of those things. Real prayer is calling out to God in the midst of pain and hurt, looking for some comfort. And we remember the scripture. God is our refuge and strength, but very present help in the time of trouble. When we pray to God in the time of need, we discover something. We discover God's strength, God's comfort, and God's peace for our lives. And many times that comes in a way that we do not expect it to happen. And finally, prayer affirms that we are not alone. Prayer affirms the fact that God is with us at all times and all places, and this is one of the most profound mystery facts, mysterious facts in human life. The consciousness that being alone, we're not alone. We may see in the Garden of Gethsemane a picture of a, universe, of, a, of a universal human experience. Jesus left the world outside the garden gate, and then in the solitude, he went out underneath the olive trees. But even though he was by himself in those olive trees at that particular time, he was not alone. Even when we are alone, we are not alone. This is a fact of human experience which we cannot explain. A prayer, I believe in prayer because it affirms that no matter how lonely I am, I'm never lonely. I'm never alone. God is always with me. There's someone that I can turn to. God is the one that will never, ever, ever leave us alone. Do you remember the old story in the book of Daniel in the Old Testament about the three Israelites, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they were cast into a fiery furnace. And according to the story, they walked into that furnace without being burned. They walked into the furnace without their clothes being singed. They walked into that fiery furnace without the one, with the one who was like the Son of God, who was like unto the Son of God. There was someone with him. Who of us here does not need that experience? There is no fiery furnace so hot. There is no one who walks with us. I don't care what you go through in life, how bad it may be, what the experience may be, God will walk with you. One who does not leave us alone, one who is a divine companion from everlasting to everlasting. A God who loves you, a God who loves me. Remember, prayer is a powerful source. Remember, prayer brings comfort. Remember, prayer affirms that we are not alone. And remember, ASAP, always, always say a prayer. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes human understanding keep your hearts and minds to Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Would you please stand as you are able for the singing of the next hymn.
baptized with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the very day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please be seated as we will now receive the offering. <laughs> Amen. We invite you to join us in our last hymn. What a friend we have. 